YouTube channel. So first of all, I would like to thank all of you who watched my first video tutorial about research method. So thank you for your overwhelming response. So this is a sort of continuation to what I have discussed last time regarding the three types of design wherein I did define and differentiate the three designs, namely quantitative, qualitative, and mixed methods. As I said, I will discuss the specific details of each design starting with quantitative research design. As a review, what is a quantitative research design? According to Gay, Mills, and Aeration 2009, this research design relies on the collection and analysis of numerical data to describe, explain, predict, or control variables and phenomena of interest. Now, let us discuss the strategy of inquiry or the types of designs used in quantitative method. In dealing with quantitative design, there are three research designs frequently used and these are first, the experimental designs, second, correlational designs, and last is the survey designs. Now, let us get to know each of the mentioned designs. Let us start first with the traditional approach in conducting quantitative research, experimental design. According to Creswell 2015, experimental research design seeks to determine if a specific treatment influences an outcome. In an experiment, you test an idea to determine whether it influences an outcome or the dependent variable. So what you need to do is you need to first decide with which to experiment. Assign individuals to experience it and then determine whether those who experienced the idea performed better on same outcome than those who did not experience it. If you want to establish possible cause and effect between your independent and dependent variable, you can use experiment design. Again, do not worry, there will be a specific video tutorial detailing IV or independent variable and DV or dependent variable. So, you need to watch out by subscribing in my YouTube channel. Actually, um, there are many types of experimental research design and we will tackle that separately in my next vlog tutorial sessions. The most basic example of experimental research is the laboratory experiments, which may differ in nature depending on the subject of research. These are the common situations where you can conduct experimental design. Administering exams after the end of semester. So during the semester, students in a class are lectured on our particular courses and an exam is administered at the end of the semester. So in this case, the students are the subject or the dependent variables, while the lectures are the independent variables treated on the subject, which are our students. So another is the employee skill evaluation. So um, before employing a job seeker, organizations conduct tests that are used to screen out less qualified candidates from the pool of qualified applicants. This way, organizations can determine an employee's skill set at the point of employment. Now, in the course of employment, organizations also carry out employee training to improve employee productivity and generally grow the organization. Further evaluation is carried out at the end of each training to test the impact of the training on employee skills and test for improvement if there is a need. Here, the subject is the employee. Well, the treatment is the training conducted. Now, let us move on to the next design, the correlational design. Tan 
2014 defined correlational design as a method which seeks to ascertain relationships between two or more variables. Simply put, it examines whether an increase or decrease in one variable corresponds to an increase or decrease in another variable. In correlational research design, researchers use the correlational statistical test to describe and measure the degree of association or the relationship between two or more variables or the sets of scores. So again, um, there will be a separate video tutorial discussing statistical treatment, so watch out and please subscribe. Correlational research examples are numerous and highlight several instances where a correlational study may be carried out in order to determine the statistical behavior trend with regard to the variable under consideration. But here are some case examples of correlational research. Online tools in administering class. Effective or not? So, let's just say you want to know if using online tools in administering class are likely to be ineffective in enhancing academic performance of the students. From your experience, um, you believe that it is practical and efficient considering the new norm that we are having right now in the academic institution since given the pandemic, COVID-19. However, you want to establish a statistical pattern that proves or disproves your belief. Now, in this case, you can carry out correlational research to identify a trend that links both variables. Another is income versus number of children. So, um, you want to know if there is a correlation or the association or relationship between how much people earn and the number of children that they have. So you do not believe that people with more spending power have more children than people with less spending power. You think that how much people earn hardly determines the number of children that they have. Yet, carrying out correlational research on both variables could reveal any correlational relationship that exists between them. Now, let us discuss another design under quantitative, the survey design. Survey research is defined by Czech and Scott 2012 as the collection of information from a sample of individuals through their responses to questions. This type of research allows for a variety of methods to recruit participants, collect data, and utilize various methods of instrumentation. Survey research provides a quantitative or numeric description of trends, attitudes, or opinions of a population by studying a sample of that population. Researchers can conduct research in multiple ways, but surveys are proven to be one of the most effective and trustworthy research methods. Generally, it is the primary step towards obtaining quick information about mainstream topics and conducting more rigorous and detailed quantitative research methods like surveys or polls. Some of the common service researches conducted were in We Are Familiar are as follows. Student satisfaction and the school services or the level of implementation of school policy. I would like also to highlight that there are three main survey research methods in conducting survey research as follows. Online or email. Online survey research is one of the most popular survey research methods today. So the cost involved in online survey research is extremely minimal and the responses gathered are highly accurate. In my case, I am using Google Form considering the pandemic situation brought by COVID-19. So guys, if you have time, you can watch my vlog one featuring how to use Google Form. So another is via phone. Survey research conducted over the telephone can be useful in collecting data from a more extensive section of a target population. There are chances that the money invested in phone service will be higher than other mediums and the time required will be higher also. 
So last is face to face, which is not uh, kind of safe for us right now, considering the situation that we are having. So researchers conduct face to face in the interviews in situation where there is a complicated problem to solve. So the response rate for this method is the highest, but it can be um, costly also. So we are done discussing the strategy of inquiry that you can make use if you are employing quantitative research design. So thank you very much for listening and watching my tutorial videos. Please support me by subscribing and sharing my video tutorials to your friends. If you have suggestions uh, for my next vlog tutorial, do not hesitate to comment down below. And that's it. That's all. God bless you everyone. This is Sergi. Until next time.